Welcome to August Lico Challenge. This problem is called Maximum Profit and Job Scheduling. We have end jobs, where every job is scheduled to be done from start time to end time I, obtaining a profit of profit I. You're given a start time end time profit arrays. Return the maximum profit you can take such that there are no two jobs in the subset with overlapping time ranges. So this kind of reminds me of a lot of interval problems we've seen. If you choose a job that ends at time X, you'll be able to start another job that starts at time X. So it's inclusive. Uh, here with this example, we can see here the maximum profit we can make is 120. We can take job one, skip jobs two and three, and just go straight to job four. And that's gonna be our maximum profit here. So they do give you a couple hints. Uh, they tell you to think DP, and they tell you to sort the elements by starting time. Um, and then they say define this DPI as the maximum profit. But really, I don't really think it's good to think in terms of this. Uh, what we're going to do is think more like a path. Um, we're going to sort our arrays by the starting time. And what we're going to do is start at the very first job. And we basically have two choices. We could either do this job and take the next job that comes um, directly after it in terms of the start time. So we want to find the first start time that comes right after uh, the end time of this job. Or we can just skip this job and take the one that directly comes after. Uh, we can take job two and just continue down that algorithm. So it's almost like a depth first search in a way. Um, and if we do that, that's going to end up becoming like n squared. So I think that should work. Let's start by doing that. What we're first going to do, we'll could do a couple steps here. We're first going to combine all our arrays. Okay. And we're going to use that zip function to do that. Uh, second, we're going to sort by starting time. And then we're going to write a helper uh, recursive method, which basically takes two choices, either first job plus the next job that comes after starting time. So next job with starting time, something like that, or skip this job and take the one right after. All right, so let's first start. Um, what we're going to do is actually, I'm just going to get the length of start time. That's going to be n. This should be the same for all three of these. Uh, next, let's combine these. I'm going to call this jobs. And what we're going to do is use a zip function. We're going to combine start time, end time, and profit. Now, the reason we need to zip all three of these is because we want to sort it by starting time, right? But if we sort starting time, we're going to lose the order of end time and profit. So we can just combine these all together so that we can like sort it all all together. I'm gonna have to make this into a list. Uh, and then sort it. And this will sort it by the start time. Okay, now we want to write a recursive method here. First get these comments out. Uh, let's see, recursive, and we're gonna pass in the index number. Let's see, so our base case is if i is equal to n, we just return zero because there's no profit to be taken, we're, we're done. Uh, so now we have two choices, right? We can either take this job and take, take the job that comes after it in terms of the starting time. Uh, so we're actually gonna have to do that in a while loop. So let me think about this for a second. Uh, let's see. So I guess we'll call this one and one would be equal to well, the thing is we need to first figure out what is that next job that's going to come. Uh, so let's see, while the next job in theory should be, you know, I plus one, but it might not be because there could be an overlap, right? So we'll have to say, okay, while J is less than N and let's see, jobs I zero, uh, so this is the end time of the job that we're currently on. We want to make sure that it's less or equal to the jobs of J uh, start time here. If it isn't, we're going to increase our J uh, all the way up to the point that it's that next job. So one is basically going to be, let's see, jobs of I and the profit, that's two, right? Plus DP of J. Or not DP, I'm sorry, recursive of J. Or 
we can just skip this all together and just go recursive i plus one. Finally, at this point, we have to return the max between these two. And make sure to do a LRU cache here, which is going to make sure that we memoize and we're not going to have to do any repetitive calls. Okay, so all we have to do then is just return the recursion starting with zero, right? And let's make sure this works. Okay, so that did not, did not work. Um, let's see what did I miss up here. So while JSON n, the n time. Oh, oh, right, right. This is if it's greater, if it's greater, then we want to increase it. Otherwise, we're not going to increase it. So my mistake. All right, so let's go ahead and submit this. Okay, so that does work, and that's going to be n squared solution. Um, and we do have n, n squared space here because of because of our recursion. Uh, we could improve this, um, and they give you that hint right here by saying do a binary search instead of this while loop, which is going to be whole n. What we might do is instead just do a binary search and check to see what the next one comes right after. But if we want to do that, that means we have to sort our start time here. Um, let's sort start time and get rid of this. But j will now equal bisect left uh, of start time and we're going to get let's see jobs of i1 I believe that should also work and this would also work uh, this would be n log n because of our binary search here although uh, we sorted it again at this point so this is kind of repetitive you could certainly create another array with the start times in order uh, I just had to do this because it was hard for me to figure out like how to do a binary search here on on our jobs when we had all those you know tuples in there. So, all right. Uh, hopefully this helped. I hope that I explained it well. Thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.